There he is, the man, Keith Pompey from the Philadelphia Inquirer, covering the Philadelphia 76ers as they get ready Sunday at 1 o'clock right here on 97.3 ESPN. And, Keith, Doc just got done kind of talking. Did he give a, a clear update at all? I'm imagining not. Yeah, he didn't come out and say Joel Embiid will play. But what uh, sense do we have from what happened today with Joel? Uh, basically, Joel participated in, in parts of practice. He did a, he did some things. He Now, he didn't go um, through the live scrimmage. You know, Doc wouldn't say, you know, if he would play or if he wouldn't. But to me, I guess it's a good sign that he did go through summer practice. You know what I mean? That he did some things. He said he got up some shots, but he did some of the things that they did. He didn't get really specific, but he said he participated in portions of practice. So as you mentioned, you know, it's uh, he didn't kind of give it anything away, but he was out there the night before shooting around and everything. I don't know if he got a chance to get anything from that, but did he, was he going through a normal routine? Did he look like he had anything wrong with him at all, or was he out there participating like normal? He was participating like normal. I mean, you know, at first when he came out, you know, I was saying to myself, like, oh, what is he doing, right? <laughs> and then, okay, maybe he'll do some foul shooting. Maybe he'll do some set shooting. But, nah, he was doing jumpers. He was doing fadeaways. Um, you know, he, he was doing lateral movement type of things with his dribbling. I mean, he he, he put up, you know, he a nice little workout. You know, he got a nice sweat in. So, to me, it, I would be shocked. Like, you know, I, I could say that, you know, if he doesn't play game one, um, you know, I, I could see that. But I'll be shocked if he doesn't play the, the first two. And And just by watching him, you know, you would expect that he would play the first game. Now, it's, it's kind of tricky when you think a couple days out because, you know, let's be honest. You know, it's one of those things a player could look good one day and then the next day it could be some swelling, some discomfort. And then that's when you really want to be extremely cautious with it. You know, so um, a workout, he looked good, but it wasn't like he was going a whole quarter running up and down. Right. So I think that, you know, you they want to be extra careful. But he looks like a guy that's going to be able to play this series. That's good to hear. Level. That's good to hear. Uh, Keith Pompey from the Philadelphia Inquirer covers the Sixers uh, because if he doesn't play, what do the matchups look like? You go Ben Simmons. Uh, where, where does he? What kind of defensive assignment does he pick up without Joel out there? You know that's crazy because you know without Joel out there, I mean you would think that you would want to have him on, like you know one of their bigs, one of their like you know, big guys. Now with Joel out there. It's one of those things, you know, you want to see if you can smother some of those guards with a Ben Simmons. But, you know, I, I think that if you don't have them offensively, too, you know, you would want to go to that lineup that the Sixers played with in game five where you have Ben playing point center, so to speak. Because, you know, I, I don't think that at this particular time that, you know, a, a guy like some of those other bigs are good. But at the same time, I think you, you're going to need a guy like a Matisse Seibel to come in you know, for the defensive purposes. But, yeah, I, I, I think that Ben is going to have to guard somebody bigger than him if, if Joel doesn't play. Which leaves who for Trey Young? There, there becomes a bigger problem. Yeah, exactly. Now, again, if, you know, I do like Matisse on the ball defense. My only problem and concern with Trey Young with Matisse is, you know, players have their patented moves to get to the foul line. Trey Young is like Joel Embiid. He gets to the foul line a lot. And the thing with Matisse is he has to be careful because what Trey likes to do is Trey loves to get by people. Matisse loves to let people get by him, and then Matisse closes and blocks their shot. Or what Trey does, he, he he's like, you know, on the interstate where someone's tailing you, and then all of a sudden people pump their brakes, you know, and hope and pray they don't run into him. <laughs> or what Trey does, he hopes and prays that people run into him and then he gets to the foul line. So when you look at what Matisse thrives at, that's what Trey thrives at and baiting people into. So that's my only concern with Matisse guarding the Trey Young. And the one thing with Matisse, it feels like even if he starts, I mean, the other night he only played about 16 minutes. Like you're not giving mm -hmm. him a full night to say, go run around with Trey Young. So even if it's Matisse, someone else is going to have to be there too to run around with Trey Young. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're going to have to put – you know, Ben, Matisse, you know, Danny Green, uh, you know, we're going to see George Hill on him. I mean, it's going to be a lot of people. But here's the thing, you know, Trey Young, you know, 
we're going to talk about him a lot. But then they have this guy, Bogdan Badanovich, who's also phenomenal. I mean, you know, this guy is having a career year. Now, again, he was a reserve last year in Sacramento, and now he's starting. You know, a 6'6", two guard. I mean, he's a guy who who really didn't play. Um, well, he didn't play in any of the three games the Sixers played due to injuries. But he's lighting it up. Like, when you focus heavily on Trey, you're giving this guy wide open looks, and he's going to bury it. So, you know, that's the question right there. You know, if if if, if you focus too much on him, what are you going to do with this guy? So the Sixers have to be careful because they have to guard both of these guys close. And I'll tell you, Keith, you know, in the last series, even if Embiid plays, they had no answer for him. Capella's a problem. I mean, he's a guy that I don't know if he's going to stop him, but he'll get his nose in there. He's a guy who's going to grab 15 rebounds, and, and he's certainly an issue. If Joel's not there, he becomes a big problem. A huge problem because, see, then the thing about it is if Joel's not there, then you have Compella and then you have John Collins, right? So it's one of those, it's like, you know, now, again, like you say, Capella isn't scoring a lot of points, but he's one of those energy guys. Like, he runs like a deer. He blocks shots. He knows his roles. He's going to grab the rebounds. But then who you you probably say, okay, Ben, we want you to stand in the way, you know, maybe Tobias, see what you can do with him. But then who's going to guard Collins? You know what I mean? It, it, it's just one of those things. It just becomes a matchup, a matchup nightmare if Joel's not there. Big time. And uh, obviously um, this team, Washington, has two great players. They drop off. This team has a lot more depth. And I mean, when you get to round two, that happens. But I just feel like – um, their their size is much different. Washington's a smaller team. This team, as you mentioned, six six two guard. Collins six nine. Hunter's another guy. They they've got some size. The Sixers gave Washington so many matchup problems. That's not going to be the same case in this series, which I think tightens it up big time. Yeah, it does, and it, it, that's going to tighten it up. And not only that, it's a young team, right? And like Brett Brown used to always have this saying, they don't know what they don't know, right? And that's what this team is. You have a young squad. You know, I know Doc says the Sixers are young, but this team is young. You have a young squad, and it's one of those things where they thrived off of going to New York, being booed, people saying stuff, the Knicks trying to bully them. So they're going to come in here, and they're going to expect that stuff. And, you know, you see Trey Young, he loves being the villain, and he's going to bow, he's going to do whatever when when the Sixers fans uh, come at him. So, you know what? You're right. They have the size. They're young. They're athletic. And if you look at a lot of these games in these playoffs, typically you say you have to win with veteran experience, right? Well, a lot of these young teams, just because of the way this season has been, a lot of these young teams are being able to excel against the older guys and and, and getting them out of there. So, uh, if Joel does not play, do they go with the same starting lineup again, or is there a different card that he'll deal out there this time because of this matchup? You know, my thing is, I think that me personally, like in the NBA is all about different matchups is about adjustments. So if you're, if you're Nate McMillan, you want him to think like, okay, I'm going to go with this lineup and I'm going to do something completely different. But me, I think the lineup that they had the last game, you know, that you would have to go with, go with that. Even though Nate McMillan is going to look at film and, and dissect it, I think that you're going to have to go with it just because you want to get defenders on the floor. You know what I mean? You do have Ben Simmons who can defend, but then, like we're talking about, he's going to play center. He may do some cross matchups for a while, but I think you need a guy like Matisse in there early to make sure somebody doesn't go off early and the next thing you know, you're battling back. You know, if not, they like that lineup where you have Mike Scott, you know, and, and playing center. And I just don't think that he's big enough to go up against um, Collins or or the guy, um, you know, the center that they have. So, to me, I would go with that lineup we saw in game five. Should be uh, a fun one. You know, Trey Young, he obviously, the Madison Square Garden crowd, as you hinted at, did not get to him. So I'm sure the Philly crowd will do their best, and I don't know that will bother him. These are the kind of games that players like that enjoy. It'll be a packed house on Sunday, 1 o'clock, right here on 97.3 ESPN. You can hear all the action. And, of course, uh, 
Keith Pompey from the Philadelphia Inquirer was kind enough to jump on board and uh, talk a little bit more about it. So you think Joel will be in this series, right? That's what you say? I do, man. I mean, the fact that he's practicing, you know what I mean? I, I just, I, I think I'm being, you know, normally you're like, oh, I don't know. But, and I could be wrong, but the, if you if you witnessed that workout and saw how good he looked, you know, it, it's just a matter of like, what's the swelling like the next day? Right. I honestly think he's going to play. I honestly do. All right. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Nice shirt, bro. Yeah, this is a little local like flavor. That. A little local flavor yeah, you, down here. Yeah, I got you. That's nice. I like it. All right. Go Mountaineers. All right, brother. Peace. <laughs> Keith Pompey, like all guests, appeared via the boardwalk hot to hotline. He is uh, from the Philadelphia Inquirer. There you go. Keith sounded pretty optimistic that Joel Embiid will play in the game on Sunday. Did anybody else hear that the same way that I did? I, I, I made sure I asked him again about it at the end there. Like, hey, just to reiterate, he feels that he will play in the series. And he said, yeah, I do.